Hey, how y'all doing? All right. There is nothing in your experience with God like having the power of God flow to you and then flow through you to bless other people. The power and the glory of God flows to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power and the glory of God is in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power and the glory of God that's on the inside of you that is consistently flowing from the Father, flowing from the Lord Jesus, flowing from the Holy Spirit, it is flowing to you and it is in you. You, you and I, we are we're, we're full of the glory of God. And, and that glory and that splendor and that power needs to be expressed. And the good news is it is being expressed in your life, through your life. Not only you receiving the blessing of God, not only you walking in the wisdom and the, and the confidence of God, not only you walking in the boldness and the courage of God, but you encouraging others to get connected to God. You know, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but, you know, we're talking about God Almighty blessing us and, and, and crowning us with their glory. You have the glory of God in you. And we are, we listen, we are unraveling, we're unwrapping the whole concept of God's glory in us through this identity change, through our mastering our emotions, our passions, our temptations through the glory of God, through the word of God, through the power and the assistance of God. We are literally now walking in life as more than conquerors. Oh, hallelujah. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I wanna drop this quick. Philippians 4.13 says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I'm telling you right now, you are strengthened by the power of God. You are strengthened by the very glory of God. You're strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Anything that you put your hands to, any activity, any occupation, any endeavor, God is with you. So we're changing our whole attitude. We're changing our whole identity. Our identity has changed. We have now come into contact with the very identity of God, the identity of Jesus Christ, and expressing that identity through the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God reveals it to us. So we make this choice. We're gonna express victory. We're gonna express what it is to have triumph through faith in the Lord Jesus, through expecting God to do what they've promised. And I'm telling you right now, oh, hallelujah. You and I, especially in this resurrection season, Passover is about to, you know what I mean? I'm telling you right now, listen, in this season, start expecting the power of God to manifest miraculous intervention into your life, into your situation, into your experience. And let me try, tell you why you, you ought to be praising and glorifying God and thanking God for, for moving mightily and answering your prayers before you see them physically come to reality. Because when you ask God anything According to the will of God, the Bible says in 1 John that God hears you. And if you know that God has heard your prayers because you prayed according to the will of God, you found the promise of God, and you prayed the promise of God to the Father, to the Holy Spirit, you prayed in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and God is talking through the Apostle John, we can come to a place that we know we have what we've asked God for. Now, that's some great faith right there. That's some powerful faith right there. And that's the kind of faith that moves the hand of God. And the hand of God is moving in your life, moving in your circumstances, in your situation. And the reason why you can come to a place where you can know that God has heard your prayers and begin to rejoice before you see anything change physically is because your experience with God is an experience based on relationship. You don't have an experience with God that is just based and founded in religion. You know, yeah, religion is okay. It's, it's a good start, but we want to move from a religious experience with God 
to a relationship or a relational experience with God where we go beyond just, you know, uh, praying when we have trouble and trials, praising when God does something spectacular in our lives. We want to go beyond, you know what I mean, just, just going to church because, oh, it's a duty. I got to go to church. No, that's religious thinking. And, and, and people that are religious in their expression, you know what I mean? They're going to die and go to heaven. But then there's that, that, that group of people in the body of Christ that, that their relationship, where it started off as a religious practice, you know, as a discipline and a reverence to God, but they moved beyond a religious experience to a personal experience with God, a relationship. That's where, you know what I mean, you, you, you believe what God is saying. And so now you, you, you've come to a place where you, you, you know not only that God is real, but that you can relate to God and God will relate to you and that you can talk to God and God will talk back to you through the word of God, by the spirit of God. So now you don't pray only when there's a crisis or there's some problems going on. You pray every day because prayer is talking to God. So you praying every day, you praying for your needs, you praying for your family's needs, you praying for, for the world's needs, you praying for every Christian that you've never met. Why? Because in your relationship with God, you see that through Jesus, Jesus prayed all the time. He talked to the Father all the time. And that's because Jesus' relationship with the Father was like, tight down to the knuckle and we're now we're, we're we're understanding that god's glory is in us and that jesus prayed that we would be one with the father one with the holy spirit one in jesus as jesus is one with the father so we now we begin to now understand some of the attributes and some of the characteristics of god and we're loving what god has revealed and so our relationship has grown from basic is grown from basic to personal and that now is we want to know god better we want to we want to please god we're getting intimate with god now we are even we're breaking into that sacrificial area where we're relating to god and and so when we pray we're not just praying once we're not just praying when there's crisis we praying all the time and then praising we we, we our relationship, our love for God has grown to the level. We, we're getting to know God's character and, 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 and attributes so awesome through God's dealing with mankind, dealing with, with the children of God in the, in the Old Testament, dealing with God's, you know what I mean, Satan's kids in the Old Testament, dealing with the children of God in the New Testament, dealing with Satan's kids in the New Testament. We're seeing, we're seeing God's personality. And we're loving the righteousness and the and the justice and the and the love and the and the joy and the peace of God. So so we're now saying, okay, God, we want to know you better. So when God does mighty things in our lives, answers prayers in our lives, you know, delivers us through crisis, we're giving God praise during them times too. Don't get me wrong, but we are becoming, you know what I mean. Our relationship with God is growing so much. Our experience through a relationship mindset, we giving God praise every single day. We're praising God just for what God has done, what the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit has already done. We're praising God for the for the the victories that God has given us. We're praising God for 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 protecting us. You know, during them times when you know, hey, 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 hey this thing worked out. God's hand was on on your situation. And so we're praising God every day. I get up in the morning and sometimes I just look around and I just start thanking God. I just start praising the Father. I praise the Lord Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit. I said, God, thank you for being good to me. That's because of relationship. And I know that's what you're doing too. You're not just praising God because God's done mighty things in your life, but you're praising God each and every day because you start, you know what I mean? You start your day off with praise and worship. Thank you, Lord, that I woke up this morning. This is you. This is you. You building your relationship with God. And then you're thanking God and praising God and, 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 and your relationship with God. You're loving God every day. You're expressing your love to God every day. You, you hit that mode in your understanding and growing as a more than conqueror of God that, that it's not enough to just have that glory in you, but you got to express it. It's not enough to have God declare you as 
prosperous, declare you as protected, but you want to you want to experience that protection. You want to go through any scenario, any conflict with the enemy, unafraid because you know that God is protecting you, that God will never deny you, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. And then when you start responding back to God, you know what I mean, releasing your thanksgiving and your joy and just loving God and praising God and just, you know, every day, multiple times through the day, you checking in with heaven, just saying, Lord, I just want you to know I thank you. I praise you. And, and that's relationship. And you know, the Bible says they that keep their mind stayed on, on, on me. I'll keep them in perfect peace. You have to understand something that when you move from a religious experience with God to a relational experience with God, everything changes. You trust God to do everything that God has, has told you and has done through other folks. Because you know, if God bless one, he'll bless anybody that releases faith and that, that you know, get the formula right. And that's you and I, you know what I mean? We, we are that remnant. We are that, that chosen generation. We are that royal priesthood of God. And, and we got the touch of God on our lives. We, 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 got the, we got the talents of God in and flowing through our lives. I mean, our bodies is the temple of God. That's a whole nother level. That's beyond religion. That's beyond religious. And that's good, but, but we in a relationship. Oh, we love the Lord our God because we're getting to know God better. And, 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 and when you get to know God better and you allow the identity of God to now become your identity, become that which you strive for, that which you press toward, that which you say to God, God, I need your help to manifest your glory. I need your help to manifest your, your wisdom. I need your help to witness your word and witness to people and testify of how awesome you've been in my life. When you talk to God like that, that's not being religious. That's, that's relationship. You like God, me and you. You know what I mean? And, and God is like, I get you. And you starting to say, God, I get you too. I'm, you understand me from, from the top to the bottom. And God, I'm, I'm understanding you more and more. And when you begin to relate to God like that, man, God, God, like, he'd be your best friend. You never alone. You never without. Because you got the great God of glory, you know what I mean, working with you and through you. But let me, let me just say this here. All right, let me just say this here. When King David fought Goliath, it was because he didn't have just a religious experience with God. King David had a relationship experience with God. That's why he's 17 years old or so, and he's facing a trained killer, Goliath. But he faced Goliath with the confidence of knowing that his relationship with God, his love for God, and his understanding of God's love for him and his appreciation for God and understanding of God's appreciation for him. And then God's covenant with him and the children of Israel and their covenant with God. They had such agreement, it was based in love. But some people, some people just took it as a religious situation, but David took it to heart. It was personal. So that's why David, when he faced that giant, he was like, what? First of all, I ain't scared of you. Hey, don't be scared of your situation. Don't be scared of the challenges in your situation. Then David turned around and says, well, you talking all of this stuff, you popping off all of this here nonsense of what you going to do to me. Now, you may have scared King Saul and you may have scared the rest of the army. They got a religious experience with God, but I got a relationship with God, man. I, me and God tight. And I'm telling you right now, God, God came on me with the touch of God, and I killed the lion. God came on me with the, with the touch of God, and I killed the bear. And you're going to be just like them because the touch of God is about to come on me. I, I don't have just a religious experience with God. This is what David was saying in paraphrase form to Goliath. He said, he said man, I serve the true and living God, and we are tight. Me and God, this is what King David was saying, I'm paraphrasing, me and God is tight. And, and David said to Goliath, you have not just offended me, but you've offended the God that I serve. And you've offended the children of Israel with all of this slanderous talk and all of these threats that what you're going to do to us. And then David was like, wait a minute, let me explain something to you, Goliath, because you're about to go lieth down forever. And, okay, 
that was pretty good. Like, you know that was good. Goliath down. Goliath, okay, don't worry about it. Watch this here. So he's saying this there because now David, when you read that story in 1 Samuel, you see David. He's speaking from a standpoint of re relationship with God. So him and God, there was love that was expressing all the time. There was confidence that was expressing all the time. There was, there was, there was boldness and faith expressing all the time from David to God, and then from God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, to David. So the mighty acts of God in David's life was just the expression of the relationship that David had singing and praising and getting to know God. And, and that's us today. We singing and praising, reading our Bibles, looking at how God operated in the lives of the, the patriarchs of old, the, 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 the New Testament saints. And we see God answering prayers to friends and family, even today in this 2022. And we're looking at God and we're, we're falling more in love with God. We're falling more in love with God's word. You know what I mean? Going to church. Listen, we love going to church because we love going expecting to hear what God's got to say and how that, what God's got to say, you know what I mean, through our assembly, what it's going to do to impact our lives, to impact our day. Glory to God. And here's King David standing before this giant. And he says, hold on. What you've said about my God, I'm taking this personal. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this is how it's going to go down. Because you're not just messing with a religious child of God. You messing with a child of God that has not only religious reverence and respect for God, but I have a personal, moving, love, and passionate, an emotional relationship with God. Oh my God, hallelujah. And, and, and when you hit that level of relating to God, when you hit that experience of, of your relationship with God is more potent and more real than any other relationship you've ever experienced on this planet, you're going to see the miracles of God. And you know, you look at David, David says, okay, enough talk. David reached into his slingshot and he ran after Goliath hit Goliath in the head and knocked him down and, and yeah, Goliath down. He go Goliath and he laid down, didn't get back up. Then David, I hate to be gruesome, but David went up on, climbed up on top of that nine foot rascal and cut his head off because while the rest of the army of Israel had a religious relationship with God, a religious experience with God, David had gone beyond that and went, and got to know God as protector, went to get to know God as prosper. He went and spent time to get to know God as healer. He spent time and got to know God as prosper and protector and deliverer. Oh my God. So when he stood before his giant, he had the attitude, his giant is standing before a child of God that has a relationship and God is backing me. I'll tell you right now, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God says, I'll be with you. So in your current situation right now, God is saying to you, do not fear the giants in your situation. Don't fear the lions in your situation. Don't fear the bears in your situation. And especially don't fear the humans that don't believe that God can deliver you and make you the head and not the tail. You keep your eyes on the, the potency and the intimacy and, the, and the, the personalness and the love of God that you release toward God and you, you talking to God every day, how much you love God and appreciate the prayers being answered, appreciate the miracles and appreciate everything. And then you look at those challenges that, that you haven't dealt with and you say, God, I thank you. When the minute I make my mind up to deal with that there, it's done. I'm telling you right now, nothing can stop a child of God that's operating and experiencing their reality with God based on a relationship mindset. And so in Philippians 4.13, those type of individuals come to a place where they say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through the Father God in the name of Jesus who strengthens me. I can do all things through the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name who strengthens me. When you armored up like that, well, ain't nobody got to tell you, you got to experience with God that's based on relationship. They going to see that. And we not crazy and we ain't wild. And we talk about expressing, expressing that glory of God, expressing the glory. And that's what you and I are doing now. And we're getting better at it.
So you need to start expecting God to come through and do miracles, signs and wonders. You need to start expecting God to come in there and drive your enemies out and knock your enemies down. Oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and your testimony of God's deliverance, your testimony of God's greatness and God's glory is, is what you are expressing right now. And you're getting better at expressing it. We are not afraid to testify. We are not afraid to give God praise. We're not afraid to give God praise in front of people, in front of the world, because greater is he that is in us. Yeah, the Holy Spirit lives in us. The Father God lives in us. The Lord Jesus lives in us by the Holy Spirit. We have an advocate. You have an advocate. We're not by ourselves. You got the power and the glory of God at your disposal. And glory to God, we are learning how to release our faith in it. We're learning how to express it. And, and I'm telling you right now, let's, let's real quick, let's go back to this right here, talking about expressing the glory of God. Jesus said in John 17, Father, the glory that you've given me, I've given to them. It's in you. It's in us. Now we're unlocking it. We're understanding what it is. And then we're making the conscious choice to express it in our, in our own personal development, at, in our careers, in our family, with our friends. Man, we just are glory expressing some bodies up in here. Hallelujah. All right, there, I think we need a praise break. Father, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Hallelujah. I feel the touch of God right now. I feel the touch. You know, you can't, you can't from a relationship experience, give God praise, glory, and honor from your heart with all your passions and just loving God and you not experience the touch. It might take, it might take five minutes. It might take 10, but you pour your heart out to God. You will face giants and kill them. You will face bears and kill them. You'll face any obstacle and run over it. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what, right now, we've dealt with some things and we, we really, really kind of started breaking some things down. And, and so I want to talk about this glory that's on the inside of you. Now, you got to understand something that, that whenever you see the word glory in the scriptures, there may be multiple different uh, Greek definitions for the one usage of the word that we have. For glory. It may be the word glory in the English may be used multiple times throughout the New Testament, but it may have different meanings in the original language. That's why we got to study. But once we study, then we break it down. So like this glory here, what is in us, we need to now not only understand it, but embrace it and then release it. Watch this here. It's the word doxa, where Jesus says, the glory which thou has given to me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. This is John chapter 17, verse 22. Now, this is a powerful verse. This is an identity-changing verse. This is a life-changing verse. And, and many times, you know, we have not really delved into this particular revelation from God. And, and, and so because we haven't, all of the manifestations of this has kind of been hindered in our expression. So let's look at what God is saying to us and what God is wanting us to embrace and then release to the world. The world needs to see the glory of God coming out of you. The world needs to come to a different respect for your identity in Jesus Christ. And they are, because let me tell you something, as we embrace the glory and as we embrace the preordained will of God for our lives, as we begin to go out and reach people with this truth, God is going to back us with the full power, just like God used David to kill that giant. And it, and it brought revival to all of the children of Israel, brought revival and blessing to the army of Israel. Now they was ready to fight. Why? Because God's glory manifested through a child of God that had an experience with God that was based in relationship and not just religion. And it stirred them to now, I just believe this with all my heart, it stirred them to not only want to fight, but after they won the battle and got all of the blessings from the conquest, from being conquerors for the glory of God, I just believe that many of, many of the army of Israel, they got closer to God. They, they left their, just a religious understanding of God and, and, and an experience with God, and they began to build on that relational experience with God. 
we are already there. We're, we're building our relationship with God, our experience with God based on personal relationship. Yeah. So look at this here. Talking about doxa, glory. So here's what it means. There's eight things, okay, eight things. And watch this here. Number one, and this is powerful, and this is always in the, in the New Testament uh, manifestation where this word is used. He says, number one, the glory of God is the opinions of God, the ideas of God, the thoughts of God, the ways of God. That's in you. That's what's been given to you. You know, there are some people that are very opinionated and they're very opinionated on a lot of things. We're opinionated on the, the will and the heart of God. We're opinionated when it comes to standing on God's ability to bring all things to pass in our lives, to bring their promises to our, our reality. Number two, that word glory, God, fill them with our opinions. Number two, fill them with our praise. Oh, how, hey. All right, now watch this here. In order for God to get more praise out of you, God's got to do more things for you and to you to make you better, to answer your prayers, to improve your character, to improve the expression of your identity, this new identity. You know, the Bible said that we are new creatures. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's 1 Corinthians. We, we new creatures. That's a new identity. So when we start, when we start embracing this, okay, God, what is that identity? And you start more than a conqueror, the head and not the tail, victorious and triumphant in everything. Through God, you will, you will knock down all your enemies. And we got, we got examples all through the scriptures and we believe in it. I'm telling you, people that have a relational experience with God, they believe everything that God's got to say. Yeah. Yeah, we're trusting God. So we're not putting no limits on God. We like, God, your will be done. Amen. You know, like them 10 lepers. Them 10 lepers came, Lord, you know, heal us. We, we want to be healed of our leprosy. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. When he said that to them, they still had the physical symptoms of leprosy. But when Jesus spoke to them and said, go show yourself to the priest, their leprosy was healed the very moment Jesus spoke to him. But it did not become physical reality until they walked away from Jesus and started going toward the priest. And the scripture says that as they went, the physical healing manifested. See, it was done in the spirit, but as they acted on it, as they walked in it and obeyed God and trusted God and released their faith in God, they were healed. And then one of them was Samaritan. Of all of, of all of that group, the Samaritan, the half Jew, he comes back and he's singing and praising and he's grateful and he's thankful to God. He says, I know, I, I know I'm supposed to go and show myself to the priest. I noticed the instruction that you gave, but God, I'm going to go. But I had to come back and say, thank you. I had to come back and say, I appreciate it. I've been, I've been dealing with this leprosy for years. And I thank you that, you, that, you, that, you, that our faith was strong enough together. We gathered together and we released our faith in your promise. And you said, go, show yourself to the priest. Thank you. See, them other nine had a religious experience with God. But that one guy, that one guy, that Samaritan, had a relational experience with God. And that's what we choose. Okay, all right, all right, let's move on. So, doxa. Glory, fill them with the same praise. On other words now, fill them with the same accolade, the same ability to praise us. Fill them with the same ability to, to draw praise out of other folks. Now, when I say praise out of other folks, I'm not talking about the worship and the praise that we give to God. We don't want folks to do that. When folks try to do that, when they try to lift us up, put us on the pedestal, we say, oh, no, 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 no. This is not my own ability here. This is the glory of God that you're experiencing. You, you're seeing all of these changes in my life for the better. That's the glory of God. I got the touch of God on me. I appreciate you acknowledging it, but we're going to give all the praise to God. All the credit goes to God. That's how you stay humble. That's how you stay growing. So that praise is coming. It's a part of the glory. People are going to acknowledge 
your excellence. They're going to acknowledge you're getting better. They're going to acknowledge it. And they're going to want to say, oh, my God, you are the best thing since peanut butter and jelly come together. And you're going to say, hey, 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 no, let's give all that praise to God. Thank you for encouraging me and letting me know that you see a difference, a change in my life for the good. But we're going to give the praise to God that keeps you safe. Uh -huh. But that kind of glory and that kind of praise generating is in you. Look at this here. Number three, honor. Oh, my gosh. The respect and the dignity. Oh, glory to God. The respect and the dignity and, and, and the reverence that's going to come out of your life because your identity is now being expressed just like Jesus. You're taking Jesus's attributes. You're taking Jesus's characteristics. You're looking at Jesus and you're looking at how he handled things in the, in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you're now taking those principles and you're starting to respond to the enemy's attacks in your life, the different scenarios that, that create opportunity to walk in fear, to walk in depression, to walk in anxiety. You're now refusing to respond like that. You know what I mean? And now you're starting to, to, to respond like Jesus, commanding the enemy that he cannot impose his will over you and in your life. And then you rebuking the devil and now you praising and, and speaking the word of God. You done started spending time with God and you spending time seeking out the promises of God and the abilities of God. And now you've embraced that. It's your identity. Now when the devil come up there trying to attack you, you attacking him and making him run. You making him flee. His children come at you, bringing you a whole bunch of rah, 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 and you like, you stopping them right in their tracks. Say, hold on for a minute. That, what you saying ain't the truth. But the truth is this. And that's biblical truth. That's natural truth. That's relational truth. That's, that's your corporate career truth. You put the truth in that situation, and, and, and the enemies of God and the children of the devil are going to stop up. They're going to stop up and back up. I'm telling you right now, because you're going to be speaking in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Religious folks don't use the name of Jesus too often. But people that have an experience based in relationship, boy, they, they, they don't just be talking about, oh, God said, no, Jesus said. Well, I was in the bank the other day, and, and one of the tellers, you know, we got, you know, the cutting up in there. And, and so I got a joke, and I said, girl, I said, look, look, you, I see the glory on you. You got the touch on you. She said, hallelujah. I said, don't start. I said, don't stop. I says, I will shout all up in this bank space and release the glory of God. I will praise God. She said, you go ahead. I'm going to do it with you. I threw my hands up and said, hallelujah, Jesus. I didn't go, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I didn't, nah, nah, that was a control. Had some, had some Holy Ghost swag on it. Had some, some discipline and some self-control. But I threw my hands up. There's probably about 12 people in the bank. I said, well, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I said, see, I told you. All the people was looking at me. They started smiling. You know why? Because they saw the touch of God. They saw that glory. They saw that, that, that manifestation of the presence. And that's what you do. That's what you have the capability of doing. Man, we got back there. And I, 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 one time I was in the same bank. I wasn't dealing with the same teller. I was dealing with another teller that was Christian. And I had these praise, you know, you know, you have those, those prayers, like we was playing at the beginning of, 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 the, of the, the, the lesson, the, the praise break. I found that on my phone. I turned that on and I turned it up in the middle of the bank. And folks was like, they just looking. And I started clapping. Pop. And then I threw my little bit. I said, I said, I told you don't mess with me. You know what? That may look foolish to the world, but it blesses them because it generates the glory of God, the touch of God, the movement of the spirit. Now, I'm not telling you to do that per se, like I do it. But you need to grow your boldness in situation to when the Holy Ghost prompts you like that, that you let the praise and the glory spread and just let it release, express it. All right. That number four definition for doxa is glory. And again, the splendor and the majesty of God. Number five, look at this here, renown. So, so Jesus says the renown, the reputation, you know what I mean, that you have placed in me through the works that I've done, I placed in them. So the more you do for God, you, you start to become popular as a child of God, popular as one that walks with God, popular as one that, that's a praiser of God. Yeah, that's the glory of God in you, that, that you're becoming renowned, you're becoming well-known, 
them are the them are those that get prayers answered to God. Then you starting to get your own prayers answered because you're talking to God and you operating in the formula. Now you praying for other folks. You praying for your family. Now prayers is getting answered for your family. You praying for coworkers. You, you know what I mean? Coworkers going through craziness. You say, hey, come here, come here. Give me your hand. Don't stop me now. You know, I mean, I get to know some of these folks first, but once I know, I said, come here, you, you, come on, let's pray. If I know that they're Christian, whether they, their experience is religious or their experience is personal and relational, come on, let's pray. I get to praying. And next thing you know, God starts answering their prayers and they come back. They look at me. They're like, yo, it happened. I'm like, yo, that's the glory of God. Hallelujah. That's the, that's, that's the power of faith in the name of Jesus. And so it's not enough for us to get our own prayers answered, but now we start allowing God to use us to help other people get their prayers answered. Then the next step is, hey, I can teach you how to do this, get your prayers answered on your own, and I can teach you how now to hear, have other people in your life get their prayers answered and you be the conduit, you be the bridge that God can use to get them prayers answered. You say, but, but what, that, that's too scary. Listen, it, it'll always be scary until you do it. And then, and then, you know what I mean? I know when I first started, you know, I felt a lot of pressure. The devil tried to make me feel a lot of pressure that because I prayed, you know what I mean? It's like, so I, I was like, oh God, you got to do this. No, you, you, ain't, you ain't even got to talk to God like that. You pray the word, you get them in just a little bit of faith. And you pray the word, God going to come in and answer because God's going to make that opportunity, that situation, an opportunity for someone to get saved or closer to God. Oh, and we're doing that every day. Every day we praying for somebody. Every day we 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 praising and worshiping God and and helping people to to recognize God in their life and to give God the praise, to give God the glory, and then to put their faith in God to work their their challenges out, to work their conflicts out, to work out their battles with the devil, to work it out so that they can walk triumphantly and defeat the devil and defeat that situation and then give God the glory. Man, that's some good stuff right there. All right, watch this here. So number five, number five was renowned. God's about to make you popular. And it's not popular for, for the worldly things, but it's popular for the spiritual things, that relationship experience that you have cultivated and are growing when God, with God. Number six, and especially divine quality. The glory that Jesus gave to us is that divine quality. That's it. I'm telling you right now, the touch of God is creating through you the divine quality, not worldly quality, not just human quality, secular quality. No, the divine. That's God. Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You have their qualities. In you, the glory is in you, it's been given to you. And that glory is expressed through you and it is expressed in every area that you put your hands to. Come on, Tog, you the temple of God. You got the touch of God. Come on, Tog, T-O-G, you got the talents of God and your faith is exploding to new levels of greatness, new levels of strength. And God is responding to those prayers you pray in. God is responding to your confession of faith. You speaking in the midst of situations that look impossible and then God coming in and doing miracles so that you can testify and so that you can begin to now witness for the glory of God. And, and through your testimony and your witness, people are going to come to you and say, I've been hearing about you. And you want to say to them, I'll show you how to tap into the power of God. The blessings on me, I'll show you what the Bible says on how to work the formula of Jesus Christ so that you now can experience a life change, so that you can experience a relational change with God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh my, I'm doing my best to try to stay calm here. All right, look at this here. Number six, especially divine quality. Number seven, the unspoken manifestation of God. This is the glory that Jesus says he's given to you. He's given it to us. The unspoken manifestation of God. Watch this here. That means, watch this here. God, when you pray and tell folks, I didn't pray about this here, I don't release faith in this here, and you get them to release faith in it, all of a sudden, God, God just start doing stuff. God just start manifesting stuff, and, and it just happens. Pow that. That's what's happening in your life. That's what's happening in your accepting this identity change. 
This is what's happening because you have chosen to believe that God has given you the power to master your thoughts and your emotions. You cast down those thoughts in Jesus' name, your emotions don't never flare up and get wild and get full of doubt and unbelief. But when you master those thoughts that the devil put in your mind and you cast those negative thoughts down, you cast those thoughts of defeat down and you replace those thoughts with the promises of God, the thoughts of faith and confidence and conviction that God will do everything that they promised that they would do. You replace those thoughts with joy and strength and peace. Next thing you know, your whole identity has changed. Your personality has changed. You go through situations, crushing stuff, knocking it down, slaying giants, slaying bears, slaying lions. Listen, reviving people in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you become renowned for that. You, you, you now begin to walk in that and, and, and that praise that you've given to God, that work that you're doing for God, it's going to get people's attention. Oh, hallelujah. That's a good place to be. All right, so look at this here. The last one is splendor. You know, we, we looked up that word splendor a while, while back. And I'm going to go back real quick to this word splendor. Now watch this here. The word splendor, when we start talking about the glory of God, it means magnificent and splendid in appearance. Oh, glory to God. God, whoa, thank you, Jesus. God will renew your youth like the eagle. You will mount up with wings like an eagle. I'm talking about with youthful, in that, in that, in that context, when the eagle, they, they do this, it's crazy. It takes a lot of faith, but God has built them for this. They strip off all of their feathers that they've been rocking for years. They go away up into the highest of the mountains. They strip themselves. And during that time, when they strip themselves, they are the most vulnerable. But they weigh up in the cleft of the rock. You got to have skills and talents to get that high. But that's what they do on a, on a like a quarterly basis. You know what I mean? When it, when it requires that because they, their wings get full of all kinds of stuff. So it hinders them. Well, we do the same thing. When God says your, your strength is renewed like the eagle, God, God, God starts dealing with us because we're now experiencing God through relationship and not religion. And so through our relationship, God speaks to us and says, okay, I want you to come away with me. I want you to spend more time in prayer. I want you to spend more time reading the word. I want you to spend more time giving me praise. And I want you to spend more quality time with me. I want you to shut down the TV, shut down the phone, tell folk don't bother you for, you know what I mean, 10, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever. And you spend that time with God. That's like that eagle going away up into the cleft of the rock. And you get up into the cleft of the rock of God. And you, you now begin to strip yourself of the prides and the fears and the sins and the, all, and the doubts and the, all of that stuff, the anxiety. You strip yourself of all of that stuff that gets clogged up in your, in your expression. And when you, when you strip yourself of all of them things like the, like the eagle strips his feathers, then all of a sudden the new feathers can grow, that new confidence, that new, that new conviction in God, that new boldness in God springs out of your time spent with God, your time making those sacrifices for God. But when you come back, you 10 times better, just like that eagle. When that eagle comes back from that little sabbatical, he comes back, that eagle, male or female, flies better, got that zip again. And I'm telling you, you getting your zip again in Jesus. You getting that glory to where now, you know what I mean, like Peter, like this is an amazing story in the book of Acts. I think it's chapter three or four. But, but Peter walking into the, to the temple, there's this guy, he's paralyzed, but he's a beggar. And he sees Peter and John come up there and, 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 and he says, alms for the poor, can you give me a couple of coins? And Peter looks down at him and said, silver and gold, I don't have, but what I do have, I give to you. And Peter says these words, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. When Peter spoke those words, his next action, Peter's, he reached down and grabbed the guy by the hand and yanked him up. And somewhere in between the grabbing of the hand and the yanking up, God released the power into that man's feet and all his paralytic symptoms, all of his paralytic, them demonic forces that paralyzed him, them physical forces that paralyzed him were broken and the, the healing power, the glory of God, the touch of God hit that guy. 
Now, Peter had to let these people know because they wanted to praise him. He was like, well, 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 no. It ain't by our holiness and our goodness that this man has been risen from, perilous, from par paralysis. It is through faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom y'all crucified. Peter tightened up his relationship with God. He didn't have a religious experience with God. You know, when Peter denied Jesus three times, you know what I mean? He had a religious experience with God. But when Jesus rose from the grave and came back and, and Peter got filled with the power of God, the Holy Ghost talking in tongues, when he got the touch of God on him, Peter was like, I ain't afraid. I ain't denying no more. I ain't ashamed. Let me tell y'all how this thing goes down. So he got this guy healed with the power of God through the introduction of God to him. Listen. Peter was operating out of an experiential relationship with God. His experience with God went to relationship status. That's why he snatched that guy up and, and, and he knew that God would come through. Oh yeah, and God's coming through for you too. Oh God, listen, no, you're not gonna be the paralyzed guy in that story. You're gonna be like Peter in that story. You're gonna go and you're gonna get other folks set free because you're gonna get them out of just religious experience with God, but into a relational experience with God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my time is almost gone. So we talk about this split, this word splendor. Magnificent and splendid in appearance. God, listen, not only are you gonna be renowned, not only is the glory of God and the respect and the honor of God and the dignity of God being released and expressed through your life, but now you move into a whole nother level where your appearance in every area and aspect of your life has been touched by God. You got the touch of God on you. You got the talent of God coming through you. You are the temple of God. Oh, hallelujah. And this second definition for the word splendor is grandeur or impressiveness or or this is i like this here impressiveness especially of appearance or style i'm telling you you about to release some some glorified swag on some people the style of god the the, the very fashion of god oh yeah that's you that's me start expecting it start expecting it start expecting the the glory of god to increase your prominence, your presence, the very, the very efficiency of what you do in life. And people are gonna be like, what is going on? You're gonna say, I got the touch of God on me. And you have to tell them, I'm not saying that in arrogance. Everybody that's called on Jesus got the touch of God, got the same glory in them. And we now have found out about it and we're expressing it. We're releasing our faith and we coming back renewed. We coming back revived and we coming back to bring revival. Everything we do, we're doing this thing like Jesus. Everything we do, we're doing this thing with the formula of almighty God. And then this word splendor means magnificent features or qualities. This is you, this is what's in you. This is what's in us. And this is what's happening. It's expressing through us. And, and, and watch this here. That's why you're looking younger. You're looking younger because the glory is on because you express in joy and you're smiling more and you're laughing more because God's been good to you. I'm telling you, God's gonna get so good to you. He's gonna be answering your prayers and they're gonna be manifesting so fast. You're just gonna be like, <laughs> you're gonna be like the tickle me Elmo situation because God is saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do so much in you to get you to express my glory. And that's where God has taken us, expressing that. And it's one thing to have it it's one thing to understand it. It's one thing to experience it, but then it's a whole nother revelation, a whole nother experience to express that glory. Yeah, we talk about express that glory, to convey that glory in thought or feelings, to convey that glory, the glory of God, your experience, your relationship experience with God through your words and your gestures. This is what expression is all about. And then to say or otherwise communicate what you think about God and what God means to you. That's a whole nother level of experiencing God and expressing your experience with God. That's personal relationship. That's intimate relationship. That's a serious connection. That's a sacrificial connection. Look at this here. And then that word 
Express means to squeeze out. So God, God is squeezing out the glory, like 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 toothpaste in a tooth tooth and, and a toothpaste tube, like a tube of toothpaste. God is just squeezing all of that glory into your life and into your situation, into your expression. And then now in mathematics, we saw this here. In mathematics, that word expression means that 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 you represent a number. You are one of the numbers of God's children. You are one of the members in the family of God. And I don't know about you, not only does it express a number, but it expresses a property. You are the property of God. We are the property of God. I'm glad God owns me. I know I own some stuff. I take care of the stuff I own. God owns us and God takes care of us. We can expect that. Okay, look at this here. In genetics, and I close with this here. In genetics, it, it means to cause an inherited characteristics or gene to appear in a phenotype. In other words, the, the expression of the glory of God to you from God and then in you by the power of God and then released to the world as a phenotype. Well, God's doing a work in us. He's doing a work in you. That's, your identity has changed. I'm accepting that, that identity change. Accept that identity change. It's a good change. And this here, look at this here. A phenotype, watch this here, is, is a set of observable characteristics of an individual resulting from the interaction, resulting from the interaction of its genotype with the environment. So now watch what he's saying here. Watch what he's saying here. First of all, God is saying to us in no uncertain terms that my DNA is in you, that, that I have given you and you have inherited my characteristics, my genes. So the DNA of God is in us. When Jesus said, Father, the glory that you gave to me, I give to them. Or in other words, the DNA that I got from you, I gave to them. So we have the, the DNA of God in us. We've been born again. We're new creatures. We've been born by the spirit of God, born from up above. We have the nature, the essence of God in us, the genotype of God in us. And then, and then it goes on to say that, 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 that these genes and characteristics will appear. They will become visible. And the, the characteristic gene that appears as a phenotype, that word phenotype, those observable characteristics of an individual resulting from interaction of the characteristics of God with our environment. What that means is, is that no matter what's in your environment, whether the enemy is attacking you, whether God is blessing you, you are interacting with God and getting stronger and wiser and getting more bold and more courageous. You're interacting with Satan in your environment and you crushing this cat, defeating this cat, chasing him off because you're expressing the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, my time is all gone, hallelujah. This has been amazing. And, and I'm telling you right now, okay, I have from the Holy Spirit what our next series is gonna be. And we may start it next week. It's called Power Play. You are about to go into Power Play mode in every area of your life. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's seal this in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for blessing us to express your glory, to express your wisdom, to express your power, to express your attributes and your character, to express that glory and that splendor and that honor. Oh God, and that 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 magnificence. We thank you for blessing us to be able to express your appearance through the characteristic change in us. We thank you for changing our identity and allowing us to grow and walk with that divine touch, to walk with especially that divine intervention and interaction that only you can create. So we magnify you and thank you. We decree and declare that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above only and not beneath. And in the midst of every conflict, in the midst of every challenge, 
every attempt of the enemy against our lives, every attack of the enemy against our lives, we respond not with fear and worry and anxiety, but we respond with the answers of your heart, oh God, the answers from the word, the answers from your commands, and the answers from your ability. And Jesus, you said that these signs would follow them that believe in your name. They would cast out the devil. They would tread upon serpents and scorpions. They would drink any deadly thing and it would not hurt them. Someone slipped something on them, it won't hurt them. And then you said that we would lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So, oh God, we thank you for giving us your divine touch, your divine talents, and making us your divine temples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, my time is all gone. Until the next time we get together, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church. We love you. We appreciate you. Hey, go into that description box. Hey, hit that donate button and, and hit that subscribe button and let us know that 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 you enjoyed this message. Give us, give us uh, uh, with a shout and, and let us know what you think. I pray that you've been touched in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom.